Hello everyone, um, welcome to the next episode of Azure Machine Learning 101. Uh, in this episode, we are going to look at the Azure Machine Learning SDK and how we can use it inside uh, Jupyter Notebook, inside uh, Microsoft Act. So you remember from the using the some graphical interface that we have inside Microsoft Azure, we able to create uh, some of the models over there very easy. Now we are going to uh, talk about uh, using code. So not always using a, a designer environment or the no code environment like automated ML can help us. We sometimes really need to write some codes over there. So we are going to see that how we can use the libraries that we have as a Microsoft Azure ML SDK to uh, kind of better doing that. If you remember from the previous videos, uh, if you check them, we already create some Azure Machine Learning uh, models and we created some endpoints from them. So as you can see, for example, for the uh, for the model of Titanic, we actually we create a model over there that gives us the endpoint and the primary key and everything. So if you look at the consume part, you see that it's provide us uh, some of the things from Python code that actually we can embed it over there. So uh, I can use this one, but also there is other way of creating that. Let's back to the uh, uh, Azure ML environment. I'm going to create a new notebook over here. So I'm going to create a new file. Uh, as a notebook, so I call it, for example, Titanic call is going to create it. So the, the important thing is that actually you need to have a compute instance that already run. But I talk about compute instance in the previous video. So you need to make sure that is actually a start and running. So when you create a notebook and you want to write, just make sure your compute instance is running over here, is it started. Uh, Sometimes you may get a message here about authentication. So this authentication back to that actually is going to check the kernel with a, you know, because that's a notebook is going to check with your Echo Microsoft Azure account and see that is it authenticated or not sometimes this can be a bit tricky you need to refresh or wait a bit if it doesn't work I sometimes uh, going here and I'm stop my kernel and restart it and it's going to work so you may see that one so here I'm going to uh, actually show you how we can uh, kind of start to write some of the code and using the Azure ML SDK. So definitely the first part is to get this code. So I just write pipe install. So that's a message to install a new uh, actually library or SDK to your current Python. So my Python, as you can see over here, the version is Python uh, 3.8 that already support Azure ML. There are some other version of the Python that install over here, Python 3, TensorFlow, PyTorch, and the other. So here I'm going to use that one and write Azure ML dash SD. Okay, so it actually is going to install for me. I'm already installed, but if you're using the other environment, you can actually use that one. So just check it out how it works. So it's already satisfied and it's already installed over there. So I'm going to actually to look at and see that uh, actually what work space I have over here. So to do that, I'm going to create another code. So I'm going to set from... So as you can see now, the SDK is already installed. I'm going to check from SDK core. Uh, I'm going to use the like the uh, workspace. So if you write to write that, it's bring it here. So this is the one, and I'm going to check what uh, workspace I have. So WS equal w s equal work space dot from config so i want to check the 
config of that so this is a code environment that i have i can easily run the code by clicking on the play that and now uh, i want to print the results so i said print ws So actually it's going to show me that uh, what is a resource group and what is a subscription ID. So I'm not be sure that already this has been created. So just make sure that in this experience, I'm not going to create a new one in the next experiment. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to create a workspace over here. This is just the existing workspace. I'm going to get that. So this library, this is DK Azure ML, helped me to actually fetch what is over there. So you actually able to get the information from them to create one. So if I back to the here, so uh, you able to actually uh, get or create a new one. So you able to actually create a new workspace over here by providing the name, subscription ID, resource ID, and the location of your research group. So it's actually using the uh, Azure ML core import workspace. So now I'm going to actually use uh, this scenario to uh, create a model i'm going to actually create a, a, a environment uh, in the python area to call my code over here so you can see that uh, just to make sure you know that in the uh, notebook you able provide a code cell or the text one so here i'm going to provide some example that i'm going to call the created ml api from Titanic example. So I'm already created a model. I'm, I already actually uh, created a, a, a endpoint here that actually it gives me the endpoint URL and the key, and I'm going to use them inside there. So here in the next one, I'm going to use some of the libraries. I already put the code in the uh, comment of this video so you can use them so here i'm just going to uh, import some of the uh, some of the packages and libraries that i need them like json i want because that's the api is going to get data from json uh, for the request it's going to send the url and the key so i need the url library request and the rest so the first thing that i'm going to put is endpoint so i'm going to put my endpoint over here I'm just going to copy and paste so this is my endpoint so this is my endpoint over here also i need to put my key that i uh, endpoint and key that i get it from over here i need to put over there so easily copy that one and put it over here okay so this is a kind of the uh, first step that actually we have that one uh, uh, also we need the import requests and maybe because i'm going to request some information from the, the data that i'm going to put if you if you want to check what format of the data you need to send to the library you're also able to come here and in python code or r code you can fetch that so these are the type of the data that for titanic i'm going to create so here is created for you but uh, if you want to call api that can be a different style so that's an adjacent file so it has an input the next level is data and we put our input over here so i just put some number like this so this is my input data i just want to check it for now it's not a batch call so uh, i need to write some of the code that i'm just going bring it here and show to you so in the next step i need to call the api so i use the uh, actually a function name encode to get this data that is about the input data that for example i provide passenger class uh, gender of people and the age of them and i want to actually pass it as a json file so i need to encode them in a json format and pass it to a, a variable name library in the next stage i need to define a 
header for the authentication request to the API. So it's the application and it's the JSON type. And these are the for the call. And then we send we use the function request.post to send this endpoint, this body that actually holds the data, and also the header that identified that's a JSON call. And in the return is actually we receive the response in this variable and uh, it has a variable named result inside that that uh, in that in my scenario if the result is equal to one may people survive otherwise not survive so i'm going just to run this one make sure that everything is run over here and you can see the result over there this is just for the api call so just for one result you can change that one so i can change the passenger class and run it again so you see that is actually is connected to the server and is running so this is a one very simple example of the using the azure ml sdk to just uh, kind of the call uh, from there so you can actually use that one over here so uh, there, there are many different scenarios so in next videos i'm going a bit more deep uh, about uh, kind of the creating a model over here not using not calling their creating the model and how to set up the workspace over here thanks so much for watching this video